confidence and got to, they have to know that they'll improve them all the time. Uh, your better kids is, is another thing. You've got to be able to challenge them and give them individual targets. Might be you're going to use your left hand go, you've got to make two passes, you get, and get them into coaching. Because as soon as they start to coach, they'll start to have an affinity for other people. When they play, it's all about me. I love our, all our guys in coach. I uh, had, had a program in Canberra where our institute-based guys would go out to the clubs and coach kids. The other thing coaching does for real elite players is they start, they start to think about solutions because they're in a position where they've got to come up with them as a coach. Oh, how can I make this play? They start talking about shot technique all the time. So rather than just having to go and practice shooting, they start thinking about it all the time. You become a much better player once you start coaching because you have to think about it for 10 players. So you basically times by 10 the amount of time you think about the game. You start coming up with solutions. Oh, what happens in the Well, how do I do that? Some of, the, some of the worst coaches are great players because they are just natural. They don't know how or why they do things, so they never go through the process of trying to work it out. And you see that happen a lot, don't you? In, in every sport. Great player tries to step straight into high level coaching fails. What? Well, he's, he's, he's just better than everyone else as a player, so he never has to worry about going back. What was the process to get me good at this? Now, I wasn't a great player, I was an okay player, I did not on a national level, but I continually think about what did I do as a kid? And I, I did as a kid I didn't know what I was doing. Not just as a game, just through fitness and through agility. How did I get myself to the level I did? And I didn't start thinking about it until I was 35. If I hadn't had been able to think about it when I was 16, 17, 18, I would have known more about what I was doing. So the elite kids, I think, are easier because they are highly motivated. The trick with them is getting them to not think about themselves. The elite kids always, and not in a, I mean, not in a bad way, but it just it stops their development. They're always worried about. Um, how can I get better? What am I doing? Uh, I've got to be perfect at everything. And thought of being perfect actually stops them from being curious. Because I might make a mistake. I don't have to make a mistake at all. And, and everyone is different. As much as we'd say you've got to treat everyone equally, uh, the same, you, have to, you have to earn the right to be treated equally. And that can be for a guy that thinks he's allowed to take 30 shots a game even though he has no right to take 30. But it can also be for the topic. You, know, you, you, you can't treat people equally because they're not equal. You can treat them fairly, that's different. But they're not equal. Everyone's different, and you need to take the mindset I'm going to approach you differently than you than you. Because you're not just handing over a McDonald's handle, hand over a gourmet meal to every kid. And, it, and it's got to be that. And as a coach, you've got to spend time saying, well, what makes this button tick? Turns this person on, how can I get the best out of that point? Uh, you probably come up in the school and you just listen to your coach and did what they said. As a player, that's certainly what I thought. And I, and I thought everyone was doing the same thing. Little did I know, when I started talking to guys after the finished play, I said, Oh, I never did that. I mean, you didn't run all those like you, know, you didn't go and do your, your training diary, you know, all that stuff. I assumed everyone was doing it. So, as a coach, I assumed everything I said was getting done. These guys get fit. I told them what to do. So people aren't me, and that's the biggest thing I've learned as a coach. People aren't me. There might be one. I found one kid that's like me. He's now coaching the Houston Chiefs. But no one else is like that. And I was talking to him before I left, and he said exactly the same thing. I assumed player X was doing what I was doing, but he wasn't. Just Hopefully, we'll have him here in Adelaide. Yeah, so. hey. Well, that's the next part of the fight. Um, I guess that's a long-winded answer to, well, round about to, to your question, how do you go across age? And it's really just individualise everything. Work out what they need to do, give them a program, find out about them. It's a big thing. Spend t the, the best time to find out about your players is just go and rebound for them. And as they shoot, you start talking talk about school, what's going on in school, how's, how's home, what are you doing, what are your goals, you know what Rebounding for shooters is like going to the hairdresser. You now you're really comfortable, sit in your chair, a bit of massage, you start talking. When you shoot in a non-confrontation situation, don't take them off and just sit down and talk. I won't give any. 
they get a massage, you know, I know. The, 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 the Masur used to give me more information about players than anyone else. So they go in, they lie on a the table, they feel really comfortable, and they just start talking, oh, I'm really struggling, they struggle with pain and bums, and girlfriends, things. And so he'd come back to tell us, I think you need to look at this, this, and this, this player. And I used him as a huge resource to get information back from the things that they would never come and tell me because I was like the head coach and a big scary. Okay, so find someone in the community that has a really good That's all right? Yeah, but it didn't, didn't set out to do it. I mean, rather just start giving information. And, and we, we did set up a program where we, we met as a staff um, weekly for those sort of things just to find out more about the kids. Now, you, you obviously don't have the support staff, so it's really up to you. But find people that can give you information. Because I'll roll on here and you don't know what's happened in the week or the two hours or the five minutes before they got in here. And you'll expect them to operate at a certain level. Maybe there's some reason why they can't. And you know, once you get their trust, they'll do anything for you. Now, now can I be bright? Yeah. Why, why am I doing this? You know what? Why am I doing this? Uh, one guy's got it. Yeah. Yeah. One guy's got it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get some. So you forget most of it. If I hadn't written the first thing up there, well, and I said, what did Marty say the first, the first thing? He wouldn't know. So no matter where you go, what clinic, any time you go to a meeting, it doesn't matter. You've got to take note. You don't go to class for that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm a teacher. Kids come to class. I know. I did. What happens? What happens? What happens? I give them a pen. And <laughs> yeah, they do. They don't pass. And the more we give them things, the more they'll expect us to know. So I would like to say it's really important. You, You've got to write things, and I think I've got a super memory, but I wouldn't do everything out of an hour as I'm talking to you. You just can't do it. So, and, you, and you shouldn't even try and do it. Pick the thing that really excites you and write that thing. So if you came out of the day with one or two things, you are one or two things better than you were before you came in. And when you talk to players, that's exactly how you talk. Don't try and get good at everything. Just get, get really good at your left hand. We're going to spend the next six weeks just working with left hand, and then suddenly they can do it. If you say get good at your left hand and a defense, then you've got to shoot a jump shot. You've got to go left crossover. You've got to box out the kids. Just can't absorb information. And as a teacher, you wouldn't teach it. You teach one thing, you get really good at it, and that builds confidence. Sport is about self belief, but we've got to arm and with some tools, take some skills, to be, be some learning styles of how to get confidence. Change, you know, 
the boyfriend dumped them, and all these, all these sort of things. And if you don't know those things, you can't coach them appropriately on that day. And that's that's where coaching has changed a bit, but I don't think it hasn't changed nothing. Except when I grew up, the coach was the be all and all. And you just did it. If you said run a thousand laps, you didn't ask any question, you just did it. Kids aren't like that. They are they're taught to question. They're not always taught how to deal with the response to the question that they don't like. And I think that'll be the next evolution of our education system. Questioning is good, but they, they do have to learn to hear no. No, you can't do it, no, that's not right. And at the moment, I don't think we teach kids to that very well. So we're giving them all these tools and confidence to question things, but if we said yes to everything they said, it would be an answer. And maybe the country's heading that way. Still look at the news. So you've got to teach them what happens when they say no. I've got a seven-year-old daughter, and the phrase, oh, mum, I'll say yes to you. When you don't get your own way, what do you say? I will next time. And that's my little thing to do. And she was at the next seven years ago the horrendous one. She's like, you know, ten weeks of premium, so she's got a bit of fire in her. She's got three older brothers and she's living in a sporting environment. And she wants her own life all the time. So your family will teach you how to coach as well. The people around you will teach you how to coach. Don't just think of it as I'm a basketball coach and start to stop putting it. What you really are is a parent. Just a new man. Well, I've had 13 years of 13, 14, 15, 17 year old boys to parent every year. For those who've got 17 year old boys, you know the challenges of that.